chilling tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. The following interactive performance is a first round entry in Chilling Tales for Dark Nights' fourth annual Evil Idol voice acting competition. And you, listener, get to help decide who advances to round two. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like this contestant to move forward or the thumbs down if you'd like to see them be eliminated. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Thank you, and good luck to all of our contestants. Meet Mr. and Mrs. Jack and Emma Thompson, a young wedded couple in their mid-twenties who, before embarking on the building of the family they've always talked about, are taking a much-anticipated road trip to no place in particular, in their brand new 1974 Ford Pinto. Jack at the wheel, driving on a hot 150 mile two lane highway that connects the two towns of Forgettable and No Matter, somewhere in the Nevada desert in early August. Wow, you see those heat waves up ahead? It's weird that you never catch up to them. The Pinto suddenly hits a pothole. Kutum! Whoa, another one? Why do they call them potholes anyway? because in the early days, they would actually hide pot in them. Emma looks at Jack, then hits him in the shoulder. I actually read somewhere that it has to do with something about the holes being the shape of stock pots or something like that. They get a lot of them here. Look at all the repairs on this road. Speaking of repairs, did you talk to your brother about painting the spare room? Jack, I think painting the room blue is a little premature. Emma. Or pink, or any color for that matter. Emma. I really think we should wait until we know. Emma. What, Jack? Engine lights on, and there's a bit of a knocking sound on the right side. Emma throws her hands up in the air. And why not? Jack pulls the Pinto off to the side of the road and turns the engine off. There's some smoke coming out from the right side of the hood and right wheel as well. They both get out of the car. Well, now what? Jack looks around. In both directions, the road disappears in phantom heat waves, and the air is still, stagnant with the pressing heat, like it was a living thing trying to crush them both. Desert hills and sand flank both sides of the road and vanish into the same never-ending horizon. But then he spots something, about a quarter mile up the road. There, he points. I think it's a truck, maybe official. It's got blinking lights on the top. Aren't you going to at least look under the hood? Jack smiles at Emma. You married a plastics man, not a mechanic. As they approach the old yellow beat up truck with the flashing yellow lights, they can read the lettering on the sign, precision paving. The older man in overalls is sweeping off a freshly repaired pothole on the road. Well, folks, says Ernie, after Jack and Emma explain their predicament. I ain't no mechanic neither, but I do know one about an hour from here who can fix you up. Lives by himself, so I gotta call him first for my place, cause I don't got no cordless phone. I'm only just over that rise. Oh, thank you. We'll go back in the car. No, no, I wouldn't do that if I was you folks. I got a chain in the truck. I'll tow your car over to my place. Can't say how long Billy's gonna be. He might not even be home. And I wouldn't leave your car sitting there with darkness coming on and all. Crazy things happen here at night. Too hot for you to sit there too. Um, I'm not sure. I think it'll be okay, Emma. He's right, it really is too hot for us to wait in the car. And it is new. The old truck, with the Pinto in tow, pulls up to a ramshackled old put-together that is Ernie's home. Sitting in the cab with him on the way, both Jack and Emma learn that he is hired by the state to repair all the potholes on that particular stretch of highway. Best in the business, I'm told, Ernie boasts. Ain't no pothole of mine need to be tended to twice. Been doing it for over 20 years now. As they pull up, they also notice lots and lots of old wrecks, and some not-so-old wrecks, some not even wrecks at all. Sitting all around his place, 
many stripped entirely of what they once were. Yep, folks around here know where to come for the parts they need. Sort of sad thing for me. I find a lot of abandoned cars around here, mostly in the desert. As they walk into Ernie's place, Jack and Emma's senses are assaulted by the sickening smell of oil, tar, and oddly enough, jasmine. Come see the garden. Jack and Emma look at each other. They follow Ernie through the cluttered kitchen, out the back door, and directly into a makeshift greenhouse where they see all manner of cactus plants, flowers, flowering shrubs, and herbs. Lots of herbs. The aroma was heady. Oh my god, this is amazing! This is all you? Ernie grins widely. Yep, and nudges Jack in the arm. It's my soft sad. Well, come on, I'll make us all a tall ass tea and I'll make that call to Billy. No beer, eh? Ernie looks at Jack. His smile disappears. No beer. I lack tea. Jack and Emma sit deep on a sheet-covered couch as Ernie hands them both two tall plastic glasses of iced jasmine tea. Emma takes a sip. This is really quite nice. Ernie smiles back at them as he dials Billy's number on his rotary phone. Hey, Billy, Ernie here. Yeah, yeah, doing fine. Patched up three holes today. Heat told me that was enough today for sure. Hey, when you gonna come and pick up all that mulch I got put aside for you anyway? Sitting here for a week now. Yeah, yeah, well, good enough, I suppose. After a couple of minutes, Ernie hangs up the phone. Billy be here in an eyes blink. I see your man there already nodded off. Emma glances at Jack, who has succumbed to the invitation of that old beat up couch to get comfy and doze off. His head slumped forward against his chest, his hand still wrapped around that jasmine tea. She herself is feeling a little sleepy and starts to look around the room while Ernie rambles on. Here for about, oh, 30 years? Yeah, tar and holes ain't exactly the life of Riley, but I tell ya. Emma's eyes take in a feast of broken down things in the room, like the cracked screen in the small TV, and the old faded yellow easy chair with its sunken stained cushion, and good god, that awful pig's head with the creepy grin jutting out of that cracked wall like it was some kind of prized thing. How the hell do you get a pig to smile like that in the first place? Mama, but that ain't no fault of hers. She just wasn't supposed to see all that, and I had to take matters in my own hand, if you know what I mean. Odd. Ernie's voice starts to sound like it's a million miles away, as she continues to look around and wonder why there are so many black plastic bags lying around on that moth-eaten, never-vacuumed, colorless rug. But that acid did the trick, boy howdy, and the only real problem now was the cleanup and all those long twist ties and pieces of rope, and that giant roach with its long antennae flicking back and forth, climbing along the telephone cord from the phone down to the carpet, stretching to under that easy chair. Black tie, which is not easy to work with, to come out on the other side to end just short of that dirty wall where there should have been a telephone jack to plug into. Can see that you know I never did call nobody. Ain't no Billy. And the last thing Emma can remember was that smile Ernie gave her when she turned her head in surprise at him. The sun was just peeking up over the dry eastern hills when, in Jack's fogged up mind, he thought he heard the sound of a jackhammer. Then he went back to sleep. When Jack opens his eyes, the air seems warmer than normal for mid-morning. At least, that's the time of day he thinks it is, because he hears birds singing, and he can see the sun still a tad low in the sky. He can also hear the tamp, tamp, tamp of Ernie's earth tamper as he methodically packs down the cold patch around Jack's head. Then out of the blue, Ernie's eyes are looking down at him, momentarily blocking the sunlight. Morning, sunshine! Ernie continues his tamping. Uh, my... my head. Oh, now, you just relax. You ain't gonna be able to move nothing. 
All that cold patch and gravel rock solid set round your face. My... I, I... I can't feel my legs. My arms. Ernie laughs. <laughs> now that would surprise me if you could. Your arms are wrapped and tied round your mid pot. And your legs? Well, they're just plain gone. Sawed them off in the tub I did. Always makes a good mulch, they do. Garden loves it. But don't you worry, the rest of you have been cauterized and your whole torso been wrapped up in a plastic bag and cinched off good. Just your face showing now. Here, take a look. Ernie takes a Polaroid out of his back pocket and shows it to Jack. It's showing both an unconscious Jack and Emma lying side by side, wrapped up in black plastic, twist ties, and rope, with only their faces showing through in an oval cutout and about three feet shorter than they once were. The horror of the moment hadn't quite sunk in for Jack, like he hadn't been listening. But... But... Why? Ernie laughs again. Why? Saves me a lot of work, that's why. Makes the pothole shorter, less to fill in. But don't you worry none. I'm just about done here. Only just the tip of your nose and lips are gonna remain just slightly above the asphalt. Ernie begins to pack in cold patch around and over Jack's forehead and face, his eyes, his cheeks, his chin, but careful to sculpt out with his fingers a small rectangle of open space around the nose and mouth, the area which he had carefully leveled off to remain just about an inch above the asphalt, something that drivers on the road would not notice, not at those speeds. I'll bet you want to ask me now about Emma. Nothing to worry about there either. She's in the other lane, opposite you, head to toe so both of you face the oncoming traffic, such as there is. Finished the work on her long ago. Jack whispers, Why? All these whys. For sport, Jack, for sport. I could bury you two, totally cover you up entirely. But why? When I can have the pleasure of your screams, which no one hears but yours truly. Entertainment is hard to come by in these parts, my friend. Suddenly, Ernie hears a car coming up the road. On Emma's side, he gets up, grabs a broom, and starts sweeping over Jack's entombment. The car passes over Emma in the opposite lane. The people in it honk their horn, and Ernie waves. Emma, fully conscious and able, screams loudly. Whoa! Oh, that's what I love, don't you know? He runs over to the opposite lane like a two-year-old running down the stairs on Christmas morning, then comes back to Jack. Passed right over her. Taya didn't get her, but don't worry, they will. You see, Jack, once your nose gets broke and starts getting leveled more and more with each passing tire, then you start tasting the tire with your lips. And finally, when everything is leveled to the road and there ain't no more tasting to do, I just add some more cold patch and a little hot tar. Level that off and bingo. We have what I'm known for, the strongest and longest lasting pothole repairs in the county. Something both you and me can be proud of. Ernie finishes sweeping Jack off, removes the sawhorse barriers around him, and gets in his truck, starts the engine, Smoke belching out the back. He leans out his window and gives a small wave. Keep smiling, folks! Jack and Emma Thompson broke down on the wrong road at the wrong time. What started out as a getaway to give themselves some space and thought about their future was now morphed into an extended vacation with no pressing need to think about anything at all. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Steve Taylor, reminding you that if you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or a thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout the month. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. Until next time, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.